Ah, slider foods. So tasty and so easy to eat copious amounts without ever feeling full or uncomfortable. Coming up, bariatric dietitians Gail Smith and Isabel Maples join me to talk about what slider foods are and how they can cause a weight plateau and even a weight regain. They're back. ProCare Health's customer favorite calcium dark chocolate bars are now available online at ProCareNow.com. Creamy chocolate plus calcium and vitamins. Vitamin D. You'll love them. Use code SUSAN10 to save 10%. Hi, I'm registered dietitian nutritionist, Dr. Susan Mitchell. You're listening to the Bariatric Surgery Success Podcast, episode number 73. Most of my career, I've worked in some type of the media, mainly radio, where I did morning drive spots for over 18 years. That's how I started podcasting when the radio said, hey, you want a podcast? I said, what's that? Well, we'll show you. Okay, that's how I learned, and ultimately, it led me to you. I created Bariatric Surgery Success to provide you with life-changing information. You'll notice it's always based on science, simple strategies, tools, whatever you need in your transformation and your journey. I'm so happy you've connected with me. You're in the right place, and I'm glad you're listening. Do you need a festive meal plan for the holidays? They're right around the corner, you know. Check out my new freebie. It's a festive meal plan. It's complete with an appetizer, an entree, a side, and a dessert. Plus, you'll get the recipes and a color photo of each one so you know what it looks like. It's available now to the end of December, and you can find the freebie on my homepage, BreakingDownNutrition.com. Also, do you have a question you want Gail or Isabel or myself to answer? Post it anytime if you're in the Facebook group. That's fa- The Facebook group is Bariatric Surgery Success with Dietitian Dr. Susan Mitchell. You can go right to my website, BreakingDownNutrition.com. There's a Contact Us link up at the top on the right, or you can hit reply to the weekly newsletter and I'll receive your question. If you're not receiving it, why not? You can sign up again on the homepage, breakingdownnutrition.com. Joining me today via Skype are bariatric dietitians, Isabel Maples and Gail Smith. If you're a regular listener, you know that both Isabel and Gail join me on these Q&A episodes to answer all your questions. They have boots in the ground every day. They're in their clinics. They're teaching patients, answering questions. Isabel is a bariatric dietitian and a bariatric coordinator with Fakir Health in Warrington, Virginia. Gail is the bariatric dietitian at the Weight Loss and Bariatric Surgery Institute in Orlando, Florida. You can find both of their contact information in the show notes. Hello, Isabel and Gail. Thanks for being here today. Good to be with with you, Susan. We have a lot of fun, and this week it's not going to be any different. We're going to start off with a question, actually a topic that's had a lot of interest in the Facebook group lately, and that is, what is a slider food, and why do we love them so? (laughs) (laughs) A A slider food is any food with a soft, mushy texture, These foods slide right through your pouch without leaving you feeling full. You don't feel the need to restrict your portions because you never feel full or satisfied. Examples of these are like applesauce, ice cream, mashed potatoes, pudding, simple white carbohydrates like pretzels and crackers. Even soup and sugar-free gelatin, cookies and candy. So you know what, Gail, I have to, to say right there is something. I look at, uh, or I'm thinking about the examples that you just gave. And so I know we're going to come to this question in a minute. But the first thing that comes to my mind is, on some of these, comfort food. So I want to come back to that. But comfort okay. food. I know they slide easily and they're easy to you know, digest. But I think of ice yes. cream, mashed potatoes, pudding. And I also mm-hmm. think comfort food. So um uh, go ahead on what you were saying. And, and you may not be familiar with this term slider food. Maybe you call, you call it something else. But go on and tell, okay. us, tell us more about what you all what you were saying. Susan, the, the slider foods are often higher in carbohydrate, like Gail was saying. They're usually lower in protein and lower in fiber. And so they're comfortable to eat. Um, often when we're, especially new after surgery, you got some discomfort, even digestive distress with eating food. And so these foods, first of all, 
moist foods tend to work well. That's what I teach my patients. Well, these foods, because they're high in carbohydrate, the, the digestive process can generate a lot of saliva in the mouth and they moisten the food. So when Gail said they're mushy foods, they might not be mushy to start with, but by the time you <laughs> chew them to start the process, you know, like a cracker, for instance, yes. by the time you start the cracker process, I mean, if you leave that cracker in your mouth long enough, you'll get a sweet taste because the carbohydrate is being broken down and then it slides down your throat a lot easier than something tougher like protein. And you don't often think that the digestive process starts in the mouth, but it truly does with right. amylase, with the enzyme that's starting to make that mushiness that you just talked about. So yes, like you said, the longer it's easy for that saliva to start break, <clears throat> excuse me, breaking it down right away. And it isn't, um, it, it's not filling, right? We know that protein is so much more satiating or yes, filling. Yes. Well, the same thing that makes it slide down your throat easier because that moistness helps it slide right out of your stomach as well. It, whereas protein spends a lot of time in the stomach turning and churning and mechanically breaking the food, I mean, chemically breaking the food down with the acid to help with that digestive process. So it stays fuller longer. And that's part of the discomfort. Sometimes the stomach stretching can feel really uncomfortable. Well, that's how this surgery works well, is to give us a clue, hey, it's time to stop. Yeah. Life between comfort and discomfort can really be a, a, a one bite, one sip. You know, what do you, why do you think, and I know you guys hear the slider foods a lot from your patients, why do you think they're so popular? And why do you think they're so easy to reach for. And I know you just said, Isabel, the rough moments after surgery where the pain, it's less, uh, much less pain with a slider food because it's, you're just not feeling it. It's not being digested the same. You think that's the main reason or what, or do you hear a lot of different reasons? Well, I, I think a lot of times they're softer and easier. They're on phase two in the beginning of the diet and they feel good. They don't cause a lot of discomfort. But when you get to foods that you actually and phase three have to break down more in your stomach, that's where you start feeling uncomfortable. And then it's easy for them to become grazing foods, which is what some people call them, or, uh, you know, they reach to them because they're hungry and they're going to graze. They're quick, they're convenient, they're everywhere you go, you know, ubiquitous, really, when you think about it. But Isabel, I know that you talk a lot about, you teach your patients not to graze. So kind of bring slider foods into that. Well, you're right in that it's easy to grab one just to, you know, have a couple crackers here or a slice of something later um, or a little pudding, but even if it's sugar-free pudding. But the problem is that those foods aren't, number one, providing enough protein to meet your nutritional needs. Yeah, so getting your protein in first, I mean, I look at the stomach as valuable real estate. I have a <laughs> lot that's going to fit in it. So you need to make sure you are meeting your nutritional needs and obviously, I'm, I want my patients as comfortable as possible as well. So when you teach on eating occasions, are, are you giving them recommendations on time? Like how, much, how many hours between their meals or how much time between fluids and foods? Why don't you share what your clinic does and what your recommendation is with that? Because I think when you have that guidance, there's less chance of grazing on slider foods, don't you think? I, oh, I yeah. agree. I oh, teach yeah. them that they need to put some structure into their meals and snacks. Now, for some people, that's going to be three meals a day. And for other people, that's going to be three meals and three snacks, depending on the people that can eat very little food at one time, um, maybe six times a day. But the point is that you're not just picking up food throughout the day. I call it eating amnesia. <laughs> you think you haven't had anything to eat all day, and yet you're just having a nibble here and a taste here. And pretty soon you've consumed more calories than you mean to. 
and they're usually not ones that meet your nutritional needs. And, and eating amnesia, hey, this is not just a surgical issue here. Eating amnesia, uh, slider foods, all of this, we're, uh, across the board, affects everyone. Because think about your days. Sometimes you're just reaching and you don't even remember you're reaching. You have so many things on your mind or somebody brings something into the clinic and it's sitting there and, and your hand just happens to go out on the way down the hall. I mean, this kind of thing, eating amnesia is big across the board. I think that is such a good term. Well, yes. the other thing is look at the what this surgical weight loss is designed to do. It is designed to give you a smaller stomach so you fill up more quickly and then you're full, you're satisfied and you're not hungry like you might be on a diet. And then you can go for a stretch of time. It might be two and a half, three hours, four hours. I usually say not more than five hours. After that, I call it skipping meals. So I want them somewhere in that two and a half to five hour range to be consuming another meal. Okay. Or snack. You know, Gail, over the years, you and I've talked many times about cravings and the brain and what happens with food and the gut brain axis, all these different things that are going on in research. And to me, there's a stress component to slider foods as well. And so I think we also have to ask ourselves and ask yourself some of them, what I call mindful eating questions, mindfulness, whatever word you want to use, but things like, why do I reach for a slider food? What sort of pleasure am I getting from eating them? How do you feel after eating them? Do you find when you're educating that those are questions that you automatically do go to, that you hear responses that make you think, you know what, this is tied to stress eating, to emotional eating? Absolutely. It certainly can be tied to that those old habits of just munching while they're working on, on, on certain projects or they're stressed out by their job. And what I do is I really stress the five to six small meals a day because our physicians strongly say how big their pouch is. It's only four ounces for the sleeve in the DS duodenal switch. And it's only a quarter to a third cup or two to three ounces for the gastric bypass. So they've got to have protein. They've got to have uh, that amount of food with the protein at each meal and each snack. But I try to tell them that maybe they're thirsty in between the meals because we also tell them you can't drink and eat at the same time. Obviously, you don't have much space, right? So you're going to throw it all up if you're drinking and eating at the same time. Or further out from surgery, you're just going to push it on through and then you're hungry in like an hour. So we really try to stress the eating the small amounts more frequently and definitely drinking in between the meals. Yeah, I think that's critical because we so many times forget to remind people that surgery doesn't change the brain. It doesn't change any issues with food that you had before going into surgery. So afterwards, those things are still there. And it's really important to remind yourself and to ask yourself, why am I eating? You know, is it on my plan that I'm supposed to be doing? Is it the, the protein that you guys are directing towards? Or am I eating because somebody just really made me mad? <laughs> Right? That is so true. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I'm just being real here of, of things because we know that slider foods are so easy to digest, so easy to reach for because, Isabel, you just said they don't require a lot of metabolic energy or meaning they don't take a lot to, to break them down. So I can see how easily it would be to experience a weight plateau and possibly start gaining weight back as a result of slider foods. What do you both say about that? I think the comfort food piece is very big. And, and the reason is because people use food as a way of coping with life. And they can't do that quite in the same way after surgery. But the slider foods give them a way to eat some foods that are more comfortable and easy to eat, easy to digest, palatable foods um, that aren't, you know, as high, for instance, higher fiber foods or protein foods can might take a lot more work to, to eat and, and more discomfort to actually provide that fullness. And these foods don't. 
they tend not to, they're in and out of the stomach a lot quicker, so they don't fill you up quite the same. Right. So and it's think, one way to cope with food. And I think that's the big issue. You never get full. So you don't um, recognize the satiety cues or feeling of fullness cues that you guys both teach. So before I ask a, um, another question about what can we do when we just want a slider food, do you each have a, um, a satiety cue that you help teach or that you teach that helps you when you're thinking, gosh, I'm just eating here copious amounts for no reason? I tell them to stop when they're still feeling comfortable, to never eat until they're stuffed. I just tell them you just have to measure your food. You know, you get used to eyeballing it and re rechecking to make sure you're measuring your food. Mm -hmm. And then stop. And I tell them to slow down. That is one way that they can, first of all, it's more comfortable. Secondly, it gives them time to realize that they're starting to get full. And I tell them, if you're starting to get full, the, it could be one bite, one sip that'll put you over the edge and you're too full. So if they're not feeling the cues, then I start asking them what cues are they feeling? Do they feel pressure in your chest? Do you feel pressure in your diaphragm? Um, are you getting a hiccup or burp or some other cue that you would never think of as being full? But it, it can be a fullness cue after surgery. Okay, fabulous tips. But I want to come back to this. Bottom line, you're going to eat some, some slider foods, right? They're just ones you want for whatever reason, and that's that. So how can you be what I'm going to call slider food savvy? Okay, what would be your general recommendation when you're just dying to have the slider food? What's the smart way to go about it? And then what would be a couple of examples? I would definitely pair that slider food with a protein food. And I would put it at a scheduled meal and snack. If Love you think it. about it, in between the meal and snack, you, you might start to reach for it and say, no, I can have that food, but I'm going to wait until my meal. I'm going to wait until my snack. And then you pair it with something with protein. Like, for instance, um, actually, one of my husband's thing is to have a, a low fat um, cheddar cheese and then put pickled banana peppers on it so you add a little crunch <laughs> Love and it. a little well, and, and so a, a, a cracker could go, go along with that but you've got something with protein in it so gail how many grams or isabel either one how many grams of protein should you pair with your slider food what what would be the the goal it could be an ounce or two so seven to 14 grams with your slider food and i, I like yeah, I like Isabel's example for her husband, but a lot of people will take a little bit of peanut butter and put it on a, a apple or put it with a vegetable uh, or they'll do a, you know, a little bit of protein like a, a salmon and have it on their little wheat thins or crackers. The kind of low fat wheat thins are good. Yeah, I've heard of people that take the little chocolate pieces. Okay, I've got, got it real here. You know, little Dove promises, yeah. those little <laughs> bit, ba baby chocolate pieces. <laughs> and they mix it with either ricotta or cottage cheese and with a, a, a few sliced almonds. So they're getting protein, uh, but they're also getting something that they really love. And one question people ask me about is popcorn. And so maybe you take that and you put it, put it with the turkey jerky to add some protein okay. or a yogurt, sugar-free, sh fat-free, high-protein yogurt, and then mix in a little bit of that peanut butter cookie or something like that. Yeah, those that's, little nutter butter things that people love. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, Gail? So you've got a, a small piece, mm -hmm. maybe even a half serving of that slider food, and you've got a serving or two of protein, and you use those together to get the craving but also get the protein that you need and help fill you up. And I love it. And in case you missed that, what she just said, come back in here. She said a half a serving of a slider food with about 10 to 15 grams of protein to, to make you slider savvy. Uh, Gail, I know you uh, use or suggest people use the sugar-free pudding powders. And how do you do that? Well, yeah, that's a good one because those 
sugar-free pudding powders per serving are like less than a gram of protein. So just if you like them, add instead of the milk or water, add two cups of part skim milk ricotta cheese or fat-free or low-fat cottage cheese and a little scoop or two of protein powder and just like whip it up and it's like a little mousse or whip, a protein whip. That's a great idea. All right. Any last thoughts, uh, either one of you, as we wrap up, anything that we've missed saying or something that's just come to mind that you really would like to leave us with in terms of slider foods? For me, I think it's still sticking to the basics, getting in structured meals, making sure you get your protein in and not having your liquid at the meal or snack, but instead having it between because that liquid can help slide that food down and and make it less comfortable as well. Excellent. Gail? Yes. We always say the 30-30 rule. Stop drinking about 30 minutes before you eat and eat your meal without any fluid unless it's all soup. And then if it is, you get something dry in your throat, take a tiny sip or two and then stop and then wait your, eat your food and wait your 30 minutes and start drinking again. Thank you. You both are so terrific. I know you have patients waiting, so I will uh, wrap us up and say thank you so much for your time. Thank you. It was fun. Thanks, Susan. And remember, if you're looking for the latest freebie, ProCare supplements, portion control dinnerware, the newsletter, other resources, just go right to my resource page. You'll find that at breakingdownnutrition.com slash resources. So take good care of yourself. Put some of these tips to work today that Gail and Isabel shared. You're worth it. Bariatric Surgery Success with Dietitian Dr. Susan Mitchell is produced and owned by Practicalories, LLC, all rights reserved. Remember, the content provided on this podcast is for information purposes only and doesn't create a patient-provider relationship. It's intended to provide reference material and is not designed to provide medical advice. Please consult your health care provider regarding any medical issues you have relating to symptoms, conditions, diseases, diagnosis, treatments, and side effects. Podcast guests express their own opinions, experience, and conclusions, which do not necessarily reflect or agree with the host, Dr. Susan Mitchell, or Practicalories, LLC.